Welcome to Vision Sunday. We're so glad you're here. Thank you so much for being a part of Compassion this morning. I'm excited about our growth challenge opportunity, and I've got a card there in your seat that my wife mentioned earlier. Thank you, Julie, for highlighting this, and hopefully you've already begun to fill it out. If it's your first time here, we'd love to just get to know you better. And then on the back, there's a growth challenge card, and we've been going over this. I'm not going to take the time to work through it today, but I did want to give you one last opportunity to take a spiritual growth step. And if you will, uh, fill this out, drop it off into the bucket at the end of the service. We'll be glad to uh, help you in your spiritual journey this year. Man, I am uh, so excited about what God has done in 2023 and what he's going to do in 2024. And today is all about kind of looking back and praising God for what he's done. And today we're going to look forward and we're going to begin to pray about what God can do in the days and months ahead this year in 2024. And I just want to uh, just brag on God a little bit. One uh, stat that I want to show you at the beginning, and I put it here because it's really important to us. We saw 107 people say yes to Jesus last year. Can we put our hands together? That's right. At Compassion Church, we uh, exist to help people find and follow Jesus. And so that's really uh, what we're all about. And when people say yes to him, that means they say, yes, I believe in Jesus. I want to be a Christ follower. We just shorten it up by saying they said yes to Jesus and they commit their life to him. And then well, oftentimes we see them get baptized. And we're so thankful that last year, 107 people said yes to Jesus. And uh, I want to set a goal for us. It's a God goal this year. I'd like your help. If we saw 107 people that said yes to Jesus last year, I, I thought about, and we talked as a team. So our team met, our staff, and we were talking about what God could do in 2024. And we said maybe 125 people would say yes to Jesus. And just to be honest, since then, I've been kind of convicted that I, that I had that number, that we would only increase from 107 to 125. And I think God can just do more. And we need to have the faith to see what God could do. And how many of you out there would say, I believe we could see not just 125 people, but if, if you guys would work hard, how many of you would say, if we, if we worked hard and invited people uh, to church and ultimately to Jesus Christ, we could see, I believe, I'm going to throw a number out there and see if you can get behind it, 150 people. Wouldn't it be great if our church could see 150 people say yes to Jesus in 2024? And uh, how many of you say, I'll do my part, I'll, I'll work hard to invite others to compassion and ultimately to Jesus Christ? And I'll do that. Would you, would you say we could do 150? If you can, would you put your hand up and just let me know that you think, that, okay, I think we just set a goal together, okay? Probably nowhere in America did they do it that way, but we just changed it. We're going to see 150 people uh, come to Christ uh, this year, I believe, and I want to just encourage you to do your part to be inviting. We saw 71 people baptized last year, and so we want to praise God for that. 71 people in our church, our size, small to mid-sized church, and we're growing, obviously, but we saw 71 people baptized last year. That means people like Audrey in this picture right here who uh, came to Christ a few years ago, and then she's been following Christ, and then she uh, decided to get baptized this year, and uh, my wife had invited her from the gym. She used her voice and said, hey, uh, I'd love for you to come to church, and ultimately she found Christ, and, and then she got baptized uh, like some more people will here at the end of the service. And what's really special about this is we're seeing generational change. In the next picture, you'll see Audrey's son, and he got baptized along with his mom. And how many of you could just put your hands together and make some noise in the building for that right there? I just want to show you, that's why we exist, to help people find and follow Jesus Christ. And there's no greater way to look at that than through these baptisms. And I'm sharing some numbers with you today because every number has a name. Let me say that again. Every number has a name. And why do we share statistics like this? Because every uh, statistic represents a soul. And even in the Bible, there's a book of the Bible named Numbers. Numbers matter to God. And that's why uh, we have metrics. Metrics matter. We want to uh, monitor and, and measure what's important. You, you monitor and measure what's important. You, you measure how much money's in your bank account because it's important, right? You measure how much you weigh because that's important. You measure how many uh, calories you take because th th these things are important. 
the most important things in all the world are souls, and every statistic has a soul behind it, and that's why we talk about it. Last year, we saw a 1,000 first-time guests come into the doors of Compassion Church, and this year, we're going to shoot for a big goal of 1,250. You say, why do you say this? Because I'm appealing to you to invite people to come through the doors of this church so that we can help more people find and follow Jesus. That's what it's all about. And you have a great opportunity uh, for this week to be out inviting people. Like we said, we've had football Sunday this Sunday. It's the pregame Super Bowl party. Uh, We're going to have good food, a lot of fun games for the children, for the kids, for the adults. And then ultimately, we're going to hear the message of Jesus Christ and a testimony from a former NFL player. So be sure that you help new first-time guests come this week. It's a great opportunity. By the way, how many of you think you could invite someone to Football Sunday next week? Raise your hand. Look at that. If we all do our part, we can help reach this goal, and we can start this week. Another um, a critical number is last year, we had 500 people that carried out some compassion project. They participated in a compassion project. And that's huge. You say, why is that huge? We, we don't even have 500 people on a normal Sunday in church, but we had 500 people last year engaging in our community, doing random acts of kindness and good works in our community. And I just praise God for that. But this year, it's Vision Sunday, and my vision is double vision. I want us to see, uh, as we emphasize good works, I want us to see 1,000 people, 1,000 of us, to be able to get involved in our community. Last week, I preached a whole message about doing good works in our community and the importance of that, and it's going to be an emphasis this year. So um, another uh, really important number, and I'm about done with the numbers, but 70 people last year were 70 first-time volunteers at Compassion Church. We had 70 70 brand new people that said, I want to serve on a team, and this year we're shooting for 100. And let me just say, if you're not already serving on a team, one of the greatest ways for you to be involved and to meet people and to get to know each other and be a part of the family and get connected more is by serving on a team. And we have a core value here. It says, We will smile big and we will laugh hard as we serve Jesus together. Let me say that again because I want you to smile big and laugh hard as we serve Jesus together. We'll smile big and we'll laugh hard as we serve Jesus together. So join a team and we can give you more information at the information tent outside. And so this year, 2024 is going to be the best year ever. In 2023, uh, we saw 23% growth, and that's a huge number in our day and age. For a a church to actually be growing is unusual, but to grow by 23% is just something we're praising God for. So in January so far, January from this year compared to last year, We are already exceeding 23%. We grew by 29% year over year comparing January to January. Yeah, you can praise God for that. Hey, uh, God's doing something here, and you can be a part of it. And I want to cast vision to you today to say, you know what? I'm going to get more engaged. We're going to grow together. And let me just say thank you because it's not me. It's not uh, just the team. It's, It's not just the staff. It's all of you doing your part, contributing, serving, and doing big things together we can continue to do more and more for God. And so uh, this year, it's going to be an exciting time. I know we uh, are excited about 2024, and one reason is because we started the year with uh, prayer and fasting. We had 24 days of prayer and fasting to begin 2024. And it's been really awesome to hear people talk about their fasting and how God's given them breakthrough. I was talking to a man outside, and he was telling me about a relationship breakthrough that he had and how God was working in his life. And I've just been so thankful to see God working through that. But it gives me confidence to know that as we have approached 2024, uh, with a, with a spiritual season like prayer and fasting, it gives me great confidence knowing that our church is doing the will of God. Man, we're going to see God do something great this year, and I'm confident about what he's going to do. Um, one particular thing that I'm excited about uh, in 2024, uh, something we've been dreaming about for some time, is uh, the possibility of starting a preschool here on campus so that we could provide a uh, 
Christian preschool for parents in our community and for little kids. And so it's a service that we want to provide for our community so that we can reach young families for Christ and so that we can utilize the facilities here that God has blessed us with. We have an awesome uh, relationship with Guthrie Mainstream who leases out and partners with us in a lot of our space. But we have some uh, wonderful space to provide for young families. And did you know with the influx of people to the valley, there's, a, there's hundreds of people moving to the valley every day. I don't know if you knew that. You probably realize it with traffic, right? I do. I'm like, wow, where would all these people come from? Uh, as they move in, our state, the state of Arizona, has highlighted the fact that the child care preschool need is only being met at a 50% level. In fact, there's such a need for more preschools in our area that that's part of the reason that we want to provide this for our community, and I'm excited about it. If you have special skills or knowledge or experience about it, and you're part of the Compassion Team, we'd love to hear uh, your insights. And if you have children that are in the preschool age or about to be, then we would love to talk to you. Give us a some feedback. We'd love to be able to partner with you to be able to provide this. So this is something exciting, something I'd love for you to pray about along with us. And uh, I want to give you, just before the message now, four focuses of 2024 for our church. Where are we headed? I want to give you a vision of what's ahead this year, 2024. Number one, one primary focus is developing devoted disciples through a program that we're starting here called Rooted, and I've got a QR code. And if you're interested in going deeper in your relationship with Jesus Christ and being more rooted in your spiritual life, then I'd love for you to scan that QR code. Take your phone out, take a picture of it, scan it, and it'll uh, help you uh, be able to know more information and how we can maybe help you get more rooted in your faith. This is not just for beginners. It's for all of us who would like to uh, go deeper into our relationship with Christ. And as we exist to help people find and follow Jesus, uh, yes, we love it when people say yes to Jesus, but we also want to help people get rooted in the Word of God and grow and become devoted followers to Jesus Christ. Another focus for us in 2024 will be doing good works in our community, doing good works in our community. So we want to uh, help people in our area see the love of Christ firsthand by the way we serve them and by the way we do good. Let me just show you in pictures what this looks like. Last year we did a feeding where we had people come to the church and we made sandwiches and you can see them putting those together and then we took the food that we prepared here and we took all the clothing and toiletries that homeless and hungry people need and we went downtown Phoenix to be able to serve the community and people lined up for sandwiches. Now, let me tell you, if you're coming to a place where you're trying to, you're just eating a turkey and cheese sandwich that strangers are handing out, you need it. Man, these people were hungry, and we gave them clothes to wear, food to eat. We showed them the love of Jesus Christ with no expectation of anything in return. We just want to be nice. This is what Christians do. This is the way of Jesus Christ. And then we actually were able to have a gospel message given. I prayed over the people, and we set up a little sound system, and we're able to communicate with them. It's just an awesome opportunity for us to realize uh, the, the, the need for us to be involved in our community. So doing good works like this. I had a lady after the service tell me that she signed up for the Valentine's dance opportunity. It's not just a dance for us. We're going to uh, help Guthrie Mainstream, who uh, they, they serve people with special needs, and they're putting on a dance for them in our gym, and we're going to be able just to bless them and help uh, these people, these awesome people, have a wonderful evening together, and we're going to make it special for them. And so she was excited. She was signing up. You should sign up today, too. You can do that on the patio. And this is just another way for us to share the love of Jesus and not just talk about it. We're going to really do something this year. And so that's going to be an emphasis, developing devoted disciples, doing good works, and digging in deep into God's Word on Sundays. Let me just make a commitment to you. This year, we're going to bulk. This is bulking season, spiritually speaking. 
In 2024, we're going to dive deeper into God's Word together. I'm going to serve up the protein, the spiritual meat of God's Word, and we're going to feast together every Sunday. I know this Sunday is a lot different. It's Vision Sunday. So come back next week and the week after, and we're going to be digging into God's Word together. It's bulking season at Compassion Church. So let's dig in deep every week. And my commitment to you is to feed you the meat of God's Word like never before. It's going to be a wonderful time as we do. And then number four, we're going to be dreaming big together about what God could do. You know, this is the time. This is the place. We are the people. God's got big plans for us. And I just want to encourage you this year to join together here at Compassion Church to see what God can do. And it's going to be an awesome ride. So um, now it's just, uh, I love you guys. I, I want to say on Vision Sunday, I counted a huge privilege to be the pastor of Compassion Church. And I'm excited about what God's doing. I mean, 23% last year. Thank you. Thank you. That's really nice. Thank you. And then uh, 29% already in January. Guys, that's phenomenal growth. And the, the most amazing thing is people are having their lives transformed through Jesus. And we want more of that. So glad to see all of you. I love you. And I'm excited about the message today. And in 2024, that's a long time ago, 20 years ago, the Olympics were in Greece. Pretty interesting. That's where the Olympic Games begin, you know, Mount Olympus and all that. And there, there was one particular event, the Summer Olympics that year, that everybody else, there was, there was this, this one event, it's a shooting event and a marksmanship, and everybody else in the competition was shooting for silver place, a silver medal, because there was one American, and he's like the, he was like the best and way ahead of everybody, way more accurate, and uh, hit, he was just so good. His name was Matthew Emmons. He was an expert marksman. And everybody said, he's going to win the gold. No one can even shoot near as good as he can. Well, sure enough, at his last shot uh, in the competition, the particular like three-position competition, at the end of it, he was so far ahead of everybody, all he had to do was hit the target, like anywhere on the whole paper, right, on the whole target, and he would automatically win the gold. He was so far ahead of everybody. And so he um, takes aim, he steadies himself, controls his breathing, all that, and he squeezes the trigger and he hits the bullseye. But to his shock and amazement, he looked up and he realized that he shot the wrong bullseye. They call it in the sport a crossfire. Instead of hitting the right target and bullseye, he shot the bullseye next to it. And guess what? He went from gold to bronze in one fatal shot. And this is what his face looked like as he realized that he hit the wrong target. And by the way, I think that's the way a lot of people look in life. They're looking at the bullseye. They think they're aiming at the right thing. And they realize at some point in life, I've been aiming at the wrong thing. And I've been in ministry, full-time ministry for like 24 years. And I've seen this face on people's faces so often. They climb the corporate ladder maybe. And they get to the top of that ladder and they realize, oh no, I climbed the wrong ladder in life. D.L. Moody said, our biggest fear shouldn't be the fear of success. It should be our fear of succeeding at the wrong thing. Well, I messed that all up. Let me just go ahead and say, I messed that up. He said, our biggest fear shouldn't be a failure. It should be succeeding at the wrong thing. And uh, I just want to encourage you today that maybe you need to look at the bullseye and make sure you're aiming at the right bullseye. In fact, the big idea today says this. Here's the big idea. Too many people are aiming at the wrong target, living for temporary things rather than eternal things. The big idea, too many people are aiming at the wrong target. And I want to help you. I want to help that facial expression of shock not be uh, something that's a part of your life. I want to Help wipe that expression off of your face today and make sure that you're aiming at what matters most. In the book of Proverbs, we get a word from God about vision. And it's in Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. It's a beautiful verse. 
Maybe you've heard it. It says this in Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. The word vision comes from a word, and the word is calzone. It sounds like an Italian word. It makes me hungry. It makes me want a calzone or a stromboli or uh, some spaghetti or something like that. But it's, uh, it's not Italian. It's Hebrew. And the Hebrew word calzone means this. It means a dream. It means a revelation from God. And it means direction from God for your life. And the idea is when you are close to God, God gives you God dreams. He gives you vision and life that is more than just the life of bios, which is biology. Uh, uh, It gives you more than just a pulse life. It gives you Zoe life like Jesus talks about, which is life with a purpose. And when you're close to God, he gives you a vision. He gives you divine direction. He gives you a, a God dream. And you get excited about living for something that matters more than just going through the motions of life, like clocking in and clocking out, the working your 40-hour week, doing your routine. God has something more for us. And today, he's got a calzone for you, a vision. He's got divine direction for your life. And maybe you're at a crossroads. Maybe you're looking for more fulfillment in life. And you would love to have God whisper into your heart something that he has for you. And as we get close to God, God says, I, I want to give you vision. And without that vision, life is meaningless. People perish without that. But when we have this God vision in our life of what he has and the purpose and the calling on our life, it gives us a reason for our existence. We can find fulfillment. And it's so important for you to be close to God so you can hear him give you this God dream, this vision, this direction for your life. And in John chapter 4, Jesus talks about vision. And I want to uh, highlight this uh, scripture as we look at John chapter 4. If you have your Bibles, you can join me. Your copy of the Word of God, John chapter 4, we'll begin reading in verse 31. Jesus wants to help us with our vision. I believe he wants to give you a God dream today that we can accomplish together as a church as we approach this new year of Vision Sunday. Verse 31 says, Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know. Now, John chapter 4, what has just happened is Jesus and his disciples took a road trip from the Jordan Valley region up to Samaria. And I say up because it is uh, an ascent that they had to climb. It was a difficult hike. Uh, They didn't get in their uh, shuttle bus and drive. They didn't fly. They walked. And so they had uh, burned some calories on the way, and uh, they uh, burned off the carbs, and they were needing to refuel. So they get to this Samaritan city of Sychar on their road trip through Samaria. And uh, if you remember, Jesus meets a lady at at the well there. We call her the woman at the well. In the meantime, before, they, uh, before Jesus has this conversation with the woman at the well, the disciples go into the city to get some food because they're hungry. They'd been walking for hours. They finally got there. They were starving, so they run into town. They're looking for, you know, maybe a Chick-fil-A or a Cracker Barrel or something. They're starving, so they go into QT, and they're looking for some good food to eat to replenish themselves, and they're all excited. And they, they think they have found it, and uh, they, they march back from the city to the outskirts of the town, back to the well where Jesus was sitting. And they, they probably brought him a loaf of bread like this. This is the way it was back then, not sliced up in a nice little uh, bread bag, you know, in slices. This is probably what their bread looked like. And so, you know, I could just see them like they do in Europe. You know, they stick it under their armpit. How many of you have noticed they do that? Like I was in Europe for a while, in Eastern Europe, and I was like, oh man, uh, that that piece of bread that he's carrying under his armpit is what they're going to serve us for dinner, and I'm not really excited about that. Uh, 
How many of you understand what I'm talking about? It's just like, oh, you didn't have to put it there, right? Like maybe, uh, anyway, they did though, and uh, it was great. <laughs> I didn't need butter. It was already, anyway, that's gross, right? Uh. So, yeah, uh, anyway, they were like, Jesus, get, here's some bread. And, you know, they were just being nice, so excited. Hey, Jesus, look at this. We've got some bread for you. And they probably opened up a Chick-fil-A bag. We got you a chicken sandwich, you know, because all Christians like Chick-fil-A. And they were excited. And Jesus says politely, hey, no, I don't, I don't, I don't want any food, guys. There's something more important. And I love this passage. It kind of sets the tone as we look back in John chapter 4 as we begin reading. Because they were all excited about something that's just temporary. And Jesus is going to teach them the truth. What you're looking at, what you're all excited about is not what we should be all about. We should be all about the fact that there are people headed to us that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is the famous words that Jesus shares. I just want to share them with you as we look together. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Master, teacher, rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. He says, what really satisfies my soul is not physical food that I put in my stomach. It's the spiritual work of God that brings me satisfaction. And if you're not engaged in the spiritual work of God, you'll never be satisfied. I see so many people wandering around through life finding, trying to find satisfaction in a hobby, some earthly pursuit, even good things like food. And they get so mixed up and they think, why is this not satisfying? And Jesus says today, I've got what you're looking for already. In fact, you don't need all that other stuff. What you really need is to be able to connect with God and serve him. Be all about him, and then you'll find a deep sense of satisfaction. It says in verse 34, Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him that sent me and to accomplish his work. Do not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, and here's the vision. Look, lift up your eyes. And see that the fields are white for harvest. Now, Jesus is using some agricultural analogies here. He says, you know, I know you're looking at these fields. I imagine it was probably springtime when they're talking. And the fields are kind of just uh, starting to develop. And it's not time for harvest. He says, don't say that right now is not a time for harvest, even though the crops aren't growing yet. Look. Look at what's coming. Because... At this point, simultaneous of the fact that Jesus was having this discussion with the disciples, the woman that he met at the well had gone into the city and spread the news that Jesus was there at the well. And they were starting to walk toward him. And when it says the fields are white, circle the word white. Bible scholars, uh, a lot of them agree that Jesus was referring to the white head coverings of the men of the city of Sychar who were flocking out to see Jesus because of the testimony of the woman at the well. And now Jesus says, hey, I know the crops are low physically, but look at the spiritual crop of people that's moving our way. It's our, it's our opportunity now to do the work of God. There's a great harvest ready for us to minister to these people, to serve them. And he says, look. He says, I want you to have the right vision. Get your eyes off of the food that you brought me. That's not important right now. That's only going to last for a season, and then you're going to be hungry again. He says, look at the eternal opportunity that we have ahead of us. Look. I love how he says it. Lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white already to harvest. The big idea is today, again, let me remind you, too many people are aiming at the wrong target. The disciples and all of us, sometimes we get caught up in the temporary things of this world and we're looking at the wrong target and Jesus wants to redirect our target. He wants to redirect our aim so we can hit the bullseye of what really matters. My heart's desire is that you would maybe... Look at your life and what you're aiming at and say, maybe I should be aiming at a different bullseye. And let me 
uh, let me talk about the target that we have for 2024 here at Compassion Church. I have a, a vision for 2024 for us that I've been sharing with our staff and our, our team of volunteers. And uh, it's called Vision 360. And just like Jesus said, hey, let's stop getting all caught up in our hobbies and in the things that are going to be here today but gone tomorrow. Let's focus on something that's going to last forever. And that's the heart behind Vision 360. Uh, let me explain the vision a little bit. I think it'll make sense to you. In a five-mile radius of our church, 400,000 people live. 400,000 people. Man, that's a dense population. In a five-mile radius of our church, you see our church there, and the circles around it, you got 400,000 people living. 360, that's where we get Vision 360, 360,000 of those people on any given Sunday don't go to church. 360,000 people won't be in church this Sunday. Uh, according to statistics for our area, 9 out of 10 people don't go to church every, or on any given Sunday in the town of Gilbert. So our vision for the 360,000, 360,000 people need a revolution a complete revolution. And what we would love to do is, and what we believe God is doing has started already. We'll see some evidence of that in the baptistry uh, today as more people get baptized. I believe the revolution has already begun. But 360,000 people in a five-mile radius of our church need a revolution to Jesus Christ. And so our heart is to help them find and follow Jesus. And then the 40,000, the difference between the 400,000 and the 360,000, I would say they oftentimes need a redirection. They need a place that they can plug in, a community, a family. Uh, uh, 40,000 people that are in church on a regular basis, I believe many of them are looking for a place like this to call home where they can partner together with wonderful people of compassion and do good works in our community and serve God and live for something that matters. My heart says, let's go and find those people and bring them in. Go out from here. Not just me, but you going out into the community, inviting them to come in so we can help them find and follow Jesus. I believe the 40,000 people in our community that are already in church or already know Jesus, right? But maybe they're like the disciples. They're looking at the Chick-fil-A. They're looking at the hobbies of life, and they're finding it not fulfilling. And Jesus wants to do the same thing for them that he did for the disciples. Hey, get your eyes off stuff that's not going to last and focus on what really does matter. And so God, uh, I believe this year is going to help us to reach not only the 360,000 that, re that need a revolution, but the 40,000 that need redirection for their life. They need to find fulfillment and meaning. And so I want to encourage us this year to hit the right bullseye. Have the right vision for your life. I wonder how many people need a God vision today, a dream in their heart again. Maybe it's been kind of a stale season for you spiritually. And today God wants to give you a calzone, a God dream, direction for your life, divine revelation that will help you understand your purpose and meaning and significance in this world. Today I want to close by talking about how we can hit the right target, the right vision. Remember that guy that cross-fired and hit the wrong target and so many people have that shock and look on their face when they realize I've been aiming at the wrong thing in life. It's not fulfilling. I'm looking for something else. Here's how we can really together hit the right target. Number one, be invitational this year. Be invitational. I said, what do you mean by that? In the story, the woman at the well, who is a new convert, is going to teach us in John chapter 4 how we can hit the right target. And she gets it right because she is so excited that she met Jesus. She goes blabbing her mouth telling everybody. In fact, she left her water pot there, but she goes back spilling and splashing the water of life everywhere she went. And she finds everybody she knows, and she is invitational. She starts inviting them, come and see a man. In fact, in John chapter 4, verse 29, I'm going to show you the verse. She says this, come see a man 
who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? And so she goes out. And she's teaching us how to hit the right target. Number one, you've got to be invitational. Be inviting people to church and ultimately invite them to Jesus Christ like the woman did. Be invitational and then be testimonial. This is how you can hit the target. You say, man, what can I do to hit the right target to have an eternal uh, purpose and find significance? Have a, a God dream for 2024. Be testimonial. What do you mean? I mean, share your testimony with somebody this week. The other day I shared just a little bit about what God was doing in my life and how he brought me here from North Carolina to Arizona. And this guy at the gym started listening, and he, he said, man, that's awesome. And he told me his story a little bit. And he's, he, we were talking about God in the gym all of a sudden. And it's the same way this lady in John chapter 4, verse 39, let me show you how she is testimonial. It means she gave her testimony. It says, many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. She shared what God was doing in her life, and it worked. When's the last time you told somebody what God was doing in your life? I often think, man, we get caught up in things of this world, the food, the hobbies, the day-to-day work activities, the schedules. And we, we talk about things that, you know, are just temporary. What if we started talking about the eternal things that God is doing in our life and sharing with others our testimony? I believe there's a world out there that's listening in and they would love to hear your story about how God is working in your life. And that's how we stay focused on the right bullseye, by being invitational and by being testimonial, sharing our story with other people. What if we all hit the target this year? What if we all said... I'm not going to get caught up in things that don't really matter. I'm going to live for what really does matter. I could just see Jesus telling the disciples, hey, guys, I know you're excited about Chick-fil-A and Cracker Barrel and the stuff you got from QT. That's great. But look over here and all these people who need to hear about salvation. They're going to spend eternity somewhere. Let's put the food away. And let's focus our energy and efforts on what really matters. And then guess what, guys? You'll find your God dream in 2024. You'll have fresh vision for the future. Jesus says, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. for They are white, all ready to harvest. And I was just thinking, what if we all got excited about this? Wouldn't it be awesome? I, uh... I love fireworks. Uh, you know that I, uh, a little bit, most of you know I'm a pyromaniac of sorts and love to just blow up stuff if I can. I showed you a video recently of uh, New Year's Eve, and let me uh, show you another little video of how we rigged up some stuff for New Year's Eve when we were lighting off a lot of fireworks. This is what it looked like. That's a, I mean, it's about the blow, boys. Yeah, it did. We got blow. 27. So ready to launch. 27 mortars ready to launch at the same time. I mean, we could go on the road and make money. It was so good, right? Maybe I'm stretching a little bit. But my friend told me, the guy that is behind all this, he, he texted me a few days before New Year's, and he said, I, I bought 30 feet of fuse so we could tie them together. Why 30 feet of fuse? That's a lot. Like, and we, we used a lot of it. And I brought some today just to help us understand the importance of us all being tied together. Because one of us lighting up for Jesus is great. But if we all get tied up in this, if we all get behind the vision, the 360 vision of reaching people that are far from God can do so much more. And the way I want us to tie together today is not with fuse, but it's by prayer because we at Compassion believe in prayer.
In fact, when I led prayer like now at the end of the service, for the first service, I was so blessed because I heard people out there praying with me. And we bonded. We tied our fires together through praying together. And what I'd love for us to do right now is say, all of us say, I'm going to do my part so we can see 150 people saved this year. I'm going to do my part in my community to be invitational for football Sunday. And I'm going to be testimonial. I'm going to share my story with others. And if that's your heart, I believe it is. We're going to unite together in prayer right now. And I'd like for everybody across the auditorium, whether you're new or whether you've been here forever, everybody, would you all stand with me as we pray together? We're going to close out in prayer here. And if you could just imagine, maybe maybe there's somebody there next to you. You just want to grab them by the hand and physically unite and connect. Maybe put your arm around your neighbor somehow and just pray with me. We're going to believe, to, we're going to believe God together that Vision 360 the vision that God has for us to reach people in our community we can start a revolution would you pray with me now maybe your hands lifted up together and you pray if you feel led to pray out loud that'd be awesome if you don't you can pray silently as we pray our heavenly father help us to get our eyes off of the things that really don't matter Like the disciples, we get so caught up in food and work and all these things that are important, but they're not most important. God, there's no telling what you could do if we would all unite together this year and do our part to be invitational, to be testimonial, and to live a missional life for Jesus Christ. So God, today we ask that you would bless our efforts to do good in our community and to share Christ and to develop devoted disciples. We call out to you together today. We unite in prayer and we beg you to use us for your glory because 360,000 people in a five mile radius need a revolution. So God, we ask in faith today, believing that you're gonna do above all that we could ask or think. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, amen.